Hey everyone, so excited you have come to join us as we continue to journey through and learn about Indigenous connections. Hi, I'm Robbie. Hi, I'm Susie. Hi, I'm Miss Carly, the teacher. It's time for Home Time with Robbie and Susie. I have hands. I have hands. Watch me clap. Watch me clap. Oh. Watch me swing. Watch me swing. Oh, what a miracle am I? I have legs. I have legs. They can bend and stretch. They can bend and stretch. Oh, what a miracle am I? Oh, what a miracle. Oh, So very special, there's nobody quite like me. I have a spine, I have a spine, it can twist and bend, it can twist and bend. Oh, what a miracle am I! I have one foot, I have one foot, watch me balance. All these different colours, little colours that you see on that map, all represents my people's country, the Dungadi country, the Waramai country, the Bunjalung country, the Pitjantjatjara, and so forth. All the different nations all around this country belong to the first Australians, the Indigenous people. They were living in this country thousands of years before European people or anyone else come to and know this country. And we already had this divided up. And languages, there was over 250 languages in just in New South Wales alone, let alone all of Australia. So you can imagine the diversity, the differences. Like if I left my country, which is down about there, the Bitterpai country, and I went up here near Darwin and I wanted to stay up there or meet the people up there, I would not understand one word they would speak to me if they spoke to me in their language. Because I just feel so out of place. The, there was so much difference. There was culturally so many, my, our ways here are totally different to the people's ways up here or up there. Um, it was just, yeah, diversity was just so different and people don't understand that our country was so protected and looked after, the Buripai country, if another country came, person from another country came into our country and started taking food off our country, we would fight tooth and nail for it to protect our country. And the same as them, if I went up into their country uninvited, I would be told to get out of there very quickly. If not, you would have a spear chase following behind you. So that's how protective it was. 
and you had a, there was a protocol. You ask before you just walk into somebody's country, can I come into your country? And you'd approach the elders and the elders would talk to you and they would ask you, why are you coming into my country? How long are you coming into my country? And when are you going to leave my country? And if you didn't give them a satisfactory answer, they could just say, no, we don't want you in my country. You know, and, and that's respect. And you honoured that and you, you obeyed that and so forth everywhere. Like today, in the country we live in today, we don't follow those protocols. We don't follow those ways. We just make our mind up and say, I live in New South Wales, but I'm going up to Queensland for a holiday. And we just go in there, we eat, drink, we do everything we want to do to satisfy ourselves, not even asking, not even thinking about it, that reason. And so it's different to the cultural lifestyle it was back then to our lifestyle here today. Respect is the greatest thing of all. We've got to respect one another, respect one another's ways, customs, and learn. If you, if you show respect, you want to learn. You want to listen to the differences. And when we listen and learn, then our thoughts and our ways, and our ideas, are totally understanding. We can understand each other. So we need to do a lot more talking about differences. So thank you, and it's been wonderful here today to spend this time. celebrating and honouring Indigenous culture. Have you? Well, today I have a very special book. Would you like to see it? It's called Big Rain Coming. And this book is written by Katrina German and illustrated by Broman Bancroft. Broman Bancroft is an Indigenous Australian. In fact, she is a first Australian artist and her tribe is in New South Wales and the tribe's name is Bunjalung. Can you see all these beautiful, beautiful artwork? Well, that's because she's an artist. In fact, she even has a gallery. You could look it up. Let's see what this book's about. Big rain coming. Hmm, I wonder what it could be about. On Sunday afternoon, old Stephen nodded to the dark clouds spreading in the south. Can you see old Stephen pointing? What do you think these boys are thinking? Big rain coming, he said. Oh, they're doing cartwheels because the big rain's coming. And the birds are flying off into the sun because they know the rain's coming. But on Monday, there was no rain. Look, the beautiful big sun hot in the sky and all of the lizards out there basking in the sun. That night, it was so warm, Rosie's kids dragged their beds outside and made to maybe feel some breeze while they slept. Can you see them on their mattresses? It's so hot. They were hoping for just a little bit of breeze. They took their beds outside to sleep. 
under all the beautiful stars. I love these pictures, this beautiful pathway that they're on. On Tuesday, there was still no rain. Look at them running around. I love this red dirt and all the squiggly lines that are being painted. The panting dogs at Robert's camp dug themselves dusty holes to keep cool. Can you see the dogs? One, two, and they're all getting so close to the dirt because the dirt and the red dust is cool. They're putting it all over their bodies because it's so hot. <gasps> There's a cloud. It's not quite grey, but I wonder if there'll be some rain. Wednesday came and still no rain. The children swam in the billabong after school. The water was warm and still. Oh, what a great idea. Because it's so hot after school, they all jumped in the billabong with these beautiful lilies growing and lying on their backs, swimming around, getting nice and cool. By Thursday night, there was still no rain. The birds are flying back home. Now Thursday, we started this on Sunday. Let's see how many days it has not been rain. Are you ready? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Five days and no rain. Oh, it's getting hot. Old Stephen's there. He knows the rain's coming. The fat green frogs huddled under the leaky tap on the rainwater tank. Here's the tank that catches all the rainwater. And look, the tap is dripping, drip, 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 drip. And the frogs are so thirsty. <laughs> They're getting all that they can. Cooling themselves off under the hot, hot sun. Then on Friday evening, the thick gray clouds over the hills were echoing with thunder. Clap, psh, clap, psh. <gasps> Look, they're coming. The lizards are getting excited. Big rain coming, said Stephen. Look at all of it swirling and whirling and the birds are getting ready. But there was still no rain. Just a big grey cloud and lots of thunder. I wonder if it's coming. On Saturday, there was rain. Look how excited. Look at old Stephen jumping up and down, no longer with his walking stick. And all the children are dancing in the rain, They're having such a great time. They're so excited because the rain has come. It's Saturday. What day did we start on? Sunday. Let's do it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Seven days ago, the clouds were there and now the rain is here. Yeah! So exciting. Wonderful, cool, wet rain. Beautiful. Look at them all continuing to dance in the rain. I like that book. I really like the pictures. Here they are dancing. Imagine if you were in a hot, hot place where it hadn't rained for seven days. You could be so hot you had to sleep outside, go for a swim in the billabong, and then finally the rain came. Would you dance in the rain? I know even at home, I like to put my gum boots on and my raincoat on and jump in all the puddles when it rains. I wonder if you do that too. Thank you for listening. I wonder what else we might learn about Indigenous culture today. All right, now this, this lesson is going to be about paint, charcoal, and we're going to combine the two together. Great. And I'm going to show you how to do a simple um, Aboriginal campsite with some dot work in the background. Perfect. All Can't right. wait. Okay, so let's start off with a circle in the middle. We just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three good circles. And you can darken them a little bit, just go over it, make your lines a little bit wider. So a bit like this. Just like that. <coughs> And if you like, I might just get you to rub your fingers lightly over top to give that lovely try and keep inside the circle so you got that effect. Mmm. Let's have a the charcoal this. making a fire. Yep. Now I'm gonna show you a symbol mm -hmm. that is a sign for a person. Okay. Now if you were sitting on the floor with your legs crossed. Yes. And I came up around you and I drew around your shape of your body. In your the sand. Cross, in the sand. You would give me a... Like boomerang a, a shape. boomerang shape, yeah. Or a shape like that. So it'll be a shape like this if I draw it and I'll show you. Yeah, I can see where so the legs... So it'll be a shape like that. See, that'll be your back of your body. Your knees would come out and pile back in there. So that's a sign of a person. Person. So you got this beautiful little setting to start off with. Isn't that good? Looking great. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a foot. Okay. Now I'll show you a simple way to do it if you're wet. At the beach. Yep. And if you want to make a baby's foot, I'll show you how to make a baby's foot in the sand. Get your fist, close it like that. Mm-hmm. So if you look just there. Wow. Okay, that is going to be the the toe part and the eel part of your foot. So you, so you just that, need actual toes. And you press that down like that in the sand. So yep. you do that like that. So you press that like that, and yep. you lift it up, and then you get your finger and go boom, 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 five little toes. Make some toes. And you'll make the perfect baby's foot. I hope you can try that next time you go to the beach. <laughs> or maybe when you're in the sand pit. Yeah. You could even be drawing some of these things yep. while you're in the sand pit. You don't even need charcoal. And you can make a kangaroo foot prick by just holding your hand like that. Yep. And you press in the sand. And you lift it up. Yep. And you get your finger, that little finger, and you go press and press. Two sides that you Two have sides. in the middle. And then you have it like that. You will have a kangaroo foot prick. You have to try it. <laughs> okay, there's many other tracks I can do, but we'll get on to this. Let's do a footprint. So making this shape? Yeah, it's a shape like that. So if you look at it, it's got the, the front of your foot where your toes are going to go mm. and then back to your eel there. Yep. Okay, let's now, uh, as Five always, toes. you've got a big toe. Yep. And then you gradually get smaller toes. Two, three, four, five. Again, smudge that in. There you go. Look at that. Now that's um, left foot. We've got to make a right foot. Okay. So we've got to turn this back that way. In front of the foot? We're we doing it. Yeah, here? we're going to do his walking. Okay. Walking down the way, and we'll do another left foot. So we get another. So he's walking down the track. So we know which way he went from the campfire. Yep. So here we go, he's walking away from the camp. And what must you do to, to go for a walk in the camp? To get some fresh water. Mm. So. To put out the fire. Yes. Oh, not only that, to drink. Drink. Cook. Yes. Yep. So, right up on the end here, I'm going to go like that, then just give that a rub. So starting in the corner, it's like a bit like a sun, mm. but it does look like a water, the ripples in the water when you <coughs> drop a stone and it goes boom, 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 boom. So you see, I'm telling a story. We've got our camp, we've got people walking up to the fire, uh, water to bring water back to the camp. Now, just to finish off our little picture here, do you want to do two women digging for yams? That's a great idea. Do you know what yams okay. are? Yams are like potatoes, but they're special, yeah. they're special roots that live yeah. under the ground and they have to dig them out yeah. and eat them for Sometimes dinner. in the shape of a, like a carrot or a turn. Yep. Shape, yeah. Yep. Or okay. a potato shape sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, some, yep. yeah. All right, now, again, the person, 
Yep. Two women, did you say? Yep. Looking at each other. Just like that. But to make them look like they're male or female, okay. this is what we got to do. Now, when women went hunting, mm -hmm. they had a digging stick they dug yep. with in the Kulaman. Okay. That's over there, yep. the carry dish. Yep. So we're going to draw the shape of a digging stick and the Kulaman. Okay. Okay, here we go. So first we do the digging stick, which goes like that. So it goes on one side. One side. Of the women. And then I do this oval shape, just like that. And whenever you see that sign there, that's women. Now, if they were men, yep. What would a men use for hunting? A spear and a shield. Spear and a boomerang. Boomerang. If that makes sense. So you would put a spear and a boomerang next to it, and what makes the difference between male? Female. So they'd still be a, a spear would look a bit like a female. Yeah, if I want to make a women's care, all I gotta do is put those symbols next to those. All there, those women. And it's all about women. But for now it's just people in the people. camp. Is that right? People out there hunting and gathering. Just put a little circle in the middle there where the yam spots gonna be where they're digging. A circle in a circle? And then Uncle Ross yeah. has Okay, but beautiful, you... that's a start. Yep. We're going to do now some colour. Okay. So. Excited. Painting. Is that all right, Maya? Okay, let's use the yellow first. Okay. Yep. Now, when you dip it in the paint, just dip it so as a... You don't go right to the bottom, just, just to the end of the stick and just dab into it. And I'm going to do no more than two dots. Because if you look at that, there's already one thinner than the other, little than the other. Oh, okay, before I dip it in again. You're going to do yeah. two and then dip again. Two dots, dip it in, two okay. dots. So let's do that around the campsite. And spacing is important. Be very wary, try and keep them in the same space. So spaces between the two dots that you're making. If I hold this up, you'll see what I mean. Keep it even, otherwise if you start spreading it out wider, it loses its shape and pattern. Dipping at the same time. Uncle Russ oh. does big paintings. Very big paintings with dot art. Yes. Yeah. I've been to Uncle Russ's gallery and there's big paintings on the wall with dots. And not only one dot, sometimes you can triple dot. So he waits till it dries, is that right? And then gets another one and puts three colours on the one dot. And some of my paintings might take me up to six months to a year. Half a year to make. Like I'm talking about a size like that, that window. Size of a Very large big. window, big paintings. <laughs> That's why he <coughs> takes his time, I just fast. Okay, now we're just going to quickly go around uh, the, the people. Feet, the people are sitting there. The people or the feet? The just people, people. sitting first. Great. And this, this is really test. Some people are very no patience, it could last two or three minutes and then they've lost it. Others will. And like, <laughs> put a dot like, down and, yeah. To make it perfect. Yeah, it can be. You've done that? You can yeah. Do, now I want you to wipe the end of the stick and you can yeah. use orange. Around the same thing. Same thing, yep. Yeah. I wasn't as good, I didn't leave as much space as you. I'm getting close to my feet. Do I need to go there or just... Just sort of come and stop and go okay. around, yeah. It's me, I suppose, my artistic nature too, is to try and bring out the best. Yes. Yeah. People. It's looking good. Now you can complete that with black and... Go again? Sort of give you an idea. And you can do the same around 
Yep. Campsite like you did there. Yep. Go yellow and then yellow you... first. Yeah. I drew everything too close together for these on glass. Oh, I did some yellow. I think it's in yellow. That's okay. Just keep it simple, see how it's... Uh, yeah, I shouldn't have done as many in there as... In you. Aboriginal art... Yep. You don't use any more than four colours. Oh, really? Mm, four colours. Like, we tend to... I'd have, you know, if I had that, I'd have a white. If okay. I had that. And that's mostly the basically the colours I would use if I was just using them colours. Yep. And, because... Um, our modern way today, we'd um, want to use blues, purples, and like if you look over there, those tap sticks. Yes. You know, there's only three, four colours there at the most. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Two shades and then three colours. Yeah. And then black, white, then. Yeah. It's great. And, and, the, and the secret is in in the art itself. It's simple. Yep. Don't make it. Don't go over the top. Yep. So, do you think we just leave it as yellow and orange and stop yeah, there? Yeah, we can stop there if you want to, and then but that's oh, got to give how you. How did a... you keep up? How did you beat me then? <laughs> I was like too fast, and then you're. Oh, well, you got me on the feed, Gav. <laughs> Perfect. Well, <clears throat> Hannah, how did yours go? Not too bad. Wow. I like how it highlights the campsite and the waterhole. Yep, brings it out, doesn't it? It does. It's beautiful. I love your dots. Even yep. some of these dots that are yellow and orange together, they look amazing. <laughs> yes. What a great job. Thank you for teaching us again today. It's such yeah, so a great... My pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time.